Nike. That was a nice bobber down. Oh, oh what the hell was that? Got him, got him. What is that? Hello everybody and welcome back to another addictive fishing video. Today we're boots on the ground out looking for our first winter steelhead steel. And today is a bank mission. Today's episode is going to be a ton, a ton of tips, techniques, tying up, showing you exactly what you want to do this time of year or just for winter steelhead in general. So you do not want to miss out throughout this episode. And I have a really good feeling that there's fish in the river because it is looking so good today. It is the essence of winter right now. All the leaves are gone. The dogs are running, so are the fish. Let's go catch one. So as we all know, walking around the woods is not always my favorite when it comes to steelhead fishing, but I must say early season, it can poise as being the most effective way to do it. I like to float in my raft or in, in my drift boat or in a jet boat or whatever. I like to be able to be mobile on a river, but early in the season when you have new fish coming in and there's not a lot in the system, sometimes it pays to be able to go back to spots. So you know, going on that bank mission, leaving the boat at home and jumping around to different rivers, different holes, and like really investigating and seeing whether or not there's gonna be fish in the area can make you a more successful early winter steelhead fisherman because we're looking for the unicorn today. We want one, if we catch two, it's a killer day. But one is the goal. We're gonna be on foot, jumping around from hole to hole and trying pretty much every method that there is under the sun. Yeah, we've made it to hole number one. And she is looking good. She is looking real, real good. Beautiful, beautiful setting to catch the first winter steelhead. Now, the hard part, what do I throw first? A lot of times, I like to stick with a routine. Go, go with the most unintrusive pattern first, like a bead, then go to your jigs and worms, and then go to your spinners and your hardware, because those are gonna be what spooks the fish the most. There's more of an odds of a fish running away from a spinner first cast that you make it in the morning rather than running away from the beads. So I'm gonna start with my beads. I'll show you guys my setup here before we get started. So the rod I use for my bead rod, I like to use a longer rod. This is a 10 and a half foot rod. And this is the Okuma X series. This is a pretty spendy one. You can use any bottle of rod, but we love Okumos here. They're an awesome sponsor of ours. So I go with a 10 six. This one's an eight to 15 pound rod. I like, or actually this one's, I was wrong. This is the nine two and when I'm, no, 910. 910, that's what it is. It's a nine foot 10 rod. I like to use a little bit longer rod when I'm bead fishing because I have such long leaders here. What I have, I have my Epixer 4000 down to a little half ounce float. I like to tie a bumper on that line so that I make sure my bobber slides up and down nicely and I don't get the resistance of the water. So I have a half ounce little Dave's Tangle Free pencil lead here. And these actually, I like, I've been a pencil lead guy my whole life, but the lead sticks to the bottom. When it hits the rocks, it grabs the rocks. These things don't, they slide right along and you can see how long I've had that one. All the paint's gone. I haven't been losing it. So I got about a four foot leader down to my first bead. I'm just going with the pink bead. Our advantage bead hook, size two, down to a smaller bead. Same thing, little incognito bead with a little clear bead underneath it, does a bead stop. And then again, a little number two hook. And if you guys wanna see the real in-depth tie up on this stuff, go and check out in the tutorials, everything you need to know to actually set this rod up. But this is what I'm using today to start for my bead rod. All right, here goes nothing. Second first cast of the year, I guess you could call it. Now the main thing, even when you're fishing beads, always start close, work to the middle, and then go far on your cast. You don't wanna be jumping around, throwing all the way across the, of the river on the first cast. Fish that depth right in front of you where you can't see bottom. I can see there's a ledge here in front of me and then it drops straight off. So I started my first cast about 10 feet up. That, that cast was probably a little too far even. So, I want to make sure to be systematically working this hole. And when I am stuck on the bank, don't be a hero and drift to the end of the hole because you will not hook the fish well. You want to work with your feet. Give it about 100 feet, 200 feet with each cast. I'm going to bring that. I could keep fishing that down, but I'm not going to because if I do hook a fish there, odds are I'm going to lose it. So, we need to make sure that we're working with our feet and not just our hands. So, in, in a few casts here, after a little back and forth through my presentations, I'll use different things. Then I'll move down to the next section of the river and work that.
Start going just a little bit deeper now with each cast. I'm not hitting bottom. Now that I've went close, middle, far, I'm gonna go a little bit deeper. Start working that same exact pattern again. Close, middle, far, close, middle, far, till I'm really obviously dragging bottom, and then I know I've gone deep enough. Look that. Ow! That made me cramp up. That was such a good bobber down. Literally just crampy wampy. Wow, that was crazy. My hand seized up. It's cold out here, everybody. It's definitely winter, and that was a fish of some sort. There is no doubt. That was fit, it, ishy. Wow, that was weird. Old man Jordan and his old man hat over here. Okay, here it goes. Same spot again. Damn it, that was totally a fish. <laughs> Fool me once, Mr. Fish. Ah, I see. Ooh. Damn it. Ooh, I know what to do. I know what to do, everybody. Can't believe I didn't do it to start. The oldest trick in the book. Ah. Yes. Liquid winter chrome blend. That is a must, especially after getting bit like that. Fish coming in three, two, two and a half, one. Man, that felt steel heady. I don't know what it was. I'm gonna make just a couple more casts of the bead, then we're gonna switch over to the jig. A lot of times you'll get a lot of whitefish bites when you're fishing beads, a lot of trout bites, but the way that hit, you could see it kind of bounce up and down and start swimming away. I think that fish just missed the hook or something, but I've gone at least over a foot deeper since I got that bite and not, my bobber hasn't leaned yet. I have not touched bottom, so. I think we can trick this one into eating. There should be more than one steelhead around, especially if you're in a, a, a hatchery situation in a hatchery area. There's always gonna be a little abundance of steelhead around. They don't come in by themselves. Normally they come in in pairs to fours to sixes. You know, they're, they're going to spawn, so they're coming in spawning pairs a lot of time. So if there's one, there's usually two. Damn. Okay, time to go to the jig. And a good contrary to, to having, you know, a bobber and bead set up is having either a bobber and an addicted sink it series jig or a worm. And I'm going to definitely fish both today, but I'm going to stick with the jig first. I, I prefer a jig because you can put some, some bait on it. The worms you can put scent on, but I like having that little bit of shrimp or something to put on the, uh, the presentation that you have here is, of the jig. That one's looking a little big, so what I'm going to do, take my little pliers here, over my bag, I'm going to... I'm going to trim some of these hairs off, give it a little bit smaller profile. There we go. They know why the hair looks so good. Okay, and so on the end of this jig, I'm going to go with a little bit of puny. Stick that right on the hook. Maybe give the jig a little dip, a jig dip, just like that. Yeah, deploying jig. Okay, so the same exact setup basically. One thing I didn't explain about the last setup is the pound test of braided line that we're using here. Because we're float fishing, we're essentially kind of fly fishing in a way with an indicator. And, and big lines. So I like to use a 65 pound addicted enforcer braid for this because that sounds very extreme, I know, but the thing is that big line floats up on the surface and it almost acts like a fly line, so it makes your mending and your line management very, very, very easy. Oh God, oh my God. What the hell? That's gotta be a steelhead. You guys just got a fat bobber down and then it came right back up right as I went to swing. You guys saw me. Damn it. Same exact spot too. Uh, uh, that's a steelhead for sure. I just know it is.
Now, I'm gonna do one last little clean sweep, and that is with the spinner. The thing about the spinner is you don't really have to fish it quite as long. I'm gonna make about five, six casts, go close, middle, far, and at each little angle, 45, 90, and then down at 45 below me, and we're gonna move down to the lower part of the hole. All right, I'm going with old Blue Faithful. And I'm actually using my twitching rod here. When I'm on the bank and I'm fishing a small river like this, it's not always necessary to have a super long rod, especially if you're casting like a, a more of a, a dead-on cast type of situation. Where like with the bobber, I'm just flinging it out there, trying to hit in the spot and then letting it float. Where this, I want to hit pinpoint spots because it's a small river. So I'm using old Blue Faithful, my Okuma X twitcher. And we're ready to fish. I'm going to make my first cast about 45 degrees up, keep my tip high, and I'm just going to slowly walk the spinner down without getting it on bottom, just reeling just enough to feel that blade thumping. I'm just going to swing it straight across nice and slow, and I'm really only going to make like four or five casts here. If a fish is going to eat the spinner after all the other things that I casted, then odds are they're going to do it in the first couple of casts, so I'm not going to have to really work hard to get these fish to bite. One thing that's very important too, it's very imperative when you're doing any kind of fishing like this, this early in the season, is always be prepared on those first few casts. If you guys noticed, each one of these presentations, when I switched them up, I got bit on within the first three casts. So don't be the guy who walks into the hole on not ready with a knot in his line, a frayed leader, and not even paying attention and cast into the hole and don't expect to have a little heartbreak. So this time of year, these fish are fresh, they're aggressive, and they're gonna be biting quickly. They're gonna bite right out of the gate. So a lot of times those first three casts are the most important. So when you get to a new hole, when you move to the tail out, always be ready and don't get complacent on when you're actually watching your bobber and be in the mindset of looking for a bite on those first couple casts. Okay, moving on. the next hole down and this one is a lot faster much more riffly spot so I'm not gonna go with the jig first I'm gonna stick with the beads again because they're gonna get down below that that fast current drag along the bottom and stay in front of those fish so first cast going with the bead let's do it we'll start with that closed cast even though it's super shallow should be able to drag through there until it gets deeper Nike, that was a nice bobber down. Oh, definitely a fish of some sort. Didn't touch bottom again going through there. I'm gonna just kind of stay stealthy. I'm not gonna get too crazy and aggressive and I'm gonna stay above the hole and I'm gonna work down into him with a different method here in just a second, but not until I cast to the other side of the river. You know everybody, one thing about a bead is you saw in those last two hook sets, I really do believe that was a fish of some sort. It might have not been a steelhead, could have been an old coho or a trout or a white fish, but the thing I found with the beads is less is more with the hook set. You can see how I'm not throwing a really big hook set up in the air, I'm just reeling down fast, slowly lower, lifting my tip and I'm letting that bobber swim away. It's imperative that you let the fish eat the bead. They're not gonna usually let it go, they're gonna grab it and go back to where they were. So as long as you bring that line tight, you get a good hook set inside of the mouth. If you bring it across too tight, that hook will just go wherever it wants to. He'll, he'll hook on the lip or just on the bottom of the jaw and that fish won't stay hooked and you'll lose a lot of fish on beads. So less is more, tip down real fast and then a slow lift while you're reeling. Don't wanna stop reeling, so didn't work there. But I catch and land a lot more fish by doing that. So keep that in mind.
Got a fish of some sort here. Might be a really old coho. You see what I mean? Didn't even set the hook on that one. The bobber was down, it was swimming away, and I just brought, I started just reeling against it, and that's what ended up hooking the thing. So don't know what we have here. Feels like it's probably an old, old coho. He's just swimming with me. Definitely got the bottom bead. Oh, it's just a rock. Yeah, see, you just gotta reel them in just like that. Catch of the day. <laughs> okay, we all saw the head shakes. Unfortunately, it's a native. We can't take this one home. Not real pretty. He's pretty old. You know, he's not a fresh one, and he's got like holes in him, you know. So, let's let him go. See you later, buddy. First catch of the day. Okay, just showed up to an absolute sex bucket. Thing looks amazing right now. Saw another angler coming, so I had to beat cheeks down to it. But I found another hole where we pose a really good chance of hooking a fish. There's my scent. Sometimes your bag's just too big, you know? Oh, 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 oh. Okay, scent up my wormy worm just a little bit. I sent in my pocket this time. And here we go. I'm only fishing about four feet deep. There was a little weight behind it when I set. A little bit, bit of a difference with the uh, the worm or the, any, any sort of jig setup is you can get away with swinging on the hook set, kind of the fun part of it. So you saw I reeled down there, gave it a big old whip, nothing behind it. It was a little heavy though, but I think I see the boulder that I hung up on, so. But Lord knows there's a fish sitting near that boulder. Huh, did not, oh! Same, same boulder, same boulder, same boulder. Nobody panic. I'm gonna go far side of that boulder. Okay, so one thing I really have to brag about this year is how amazing my jig box looks. Look at that. And I just feel like, guys, it's very important to have an assortment of colors, a variety. Make sure you have different sizes, colors, you know, tones, you know, octaves, all the things. All the things. You want to have them. Um, but I got a really cool jig box going right now. I have a lot of the 16,000s I've found. Those have been some of my favorite. Um, we have some normal eighth and then the quarter ounce all of it also works really really good it catches a lot of fish but I just broke my jig off so I'm going with this one now oh what the hell was that came up before I could really lay into it got him got him what is that Got no hook. Barely no hook. This thing ate it twice, everybody. Freaking ate it twice. Oh, that was awesome. Thing went down, bobber went down, came back up, floated a little bit further, and then just drained in. Doesn't look like a winter steelhead. Looks like an older summer. You can tell by how snaky he is. He doesn't have a lot of big. Doesn't have a lot of fat and stuff on him. But we got him. We got a steelhead. That counts. All right, look at that thing. Wow, there it is. It Not the back. first winner of the year, but the first steelhead on the line of the year. Look at how beautiful that thing is. Just a beautiful little old summer steelhead. You can see his hatchery clipped. Beautiful fish, and look at that jig in his mouth. We just came out with these guys on our spring drop right before the summertime, so be on the lookout for these jigs. I absolutely love these little guys. I feel like with the way the worm works, Throughout the season, the lamprey, which these imitate, get bigger and bigger and bigger. So they start small, as they start to grow, these things come and spawn in the, in the winter or in the summertime. So they'll get bigger and bigger as, as long as they're here. But nonetheless, oh, oh there he goes. Woohoo! 
first fish in the Indiana Jones hat. First fish on the micro worm. Heck yeah, everybody. Well, everybody, it was a valiant second effort at a winter steelhead this year. Not bad though for December 12th. I'd say we're doing pretty good. We saw a real winter steelhead swim about five feet from us. Do not know how we didn't hug it. And we got a summer. So we accomplished the goal today. That was catching a steelhead. Hope you guys learned a little bit on this episode. And in the spirit of fish porn, we're gonna add in one of my favorite clips from last year of the fish of a lifetime that I caught. It's kind of a long clip, but you guys will enjoy it. It's very exciting, it's very awesome. Be sure to ask some questions in the comments below, you guys, if you have any questions about these winter steelhead setups. And also, go back into the video logs on our playlist and you can look up all the tutorials on how to set up every single piece of gear you saw me use here today. So, enjoy this next clip. Can't wait to see you guys next time. You all stay fishy, we'll see you out there. I'm tip wrap, dude. What is that? Oh, we're good. We're good. We're good. I got him. That's a big fish. That's a big fish. It's big. I, I tip wrapped so bad, everybody. That was so scary. <laughs> That's a big fish. Oh my goodness. Wow. That's a lot bigger than I even Yeah, it's way bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. He's completely wrapped around his head right now. Here we go. Here we go, Phil. Here we go. Stop it. I'm on, dude. Get over here. I haven't seen a big fin yet. Oh my God, it's huge. Please come unwrapped. Please just come unwrapped. That's gonna break it. This is it, this is it right, right here. This is it right here. Yes! Oh Good God. job, Bill. Great job, buddy. Oh. <laughs> yes! Oh my God. There you go. Oh, oh wow. my God. Yeah. Dude, that, that is a tank. Let's let him chill. Let's let him relax. Absolute tank. Chill out. Bro. Wow. That's a tank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just said it. I said, I need to catch my real wild steelhead. And here it is. <laughs> 20. 19 and a half. 19 and a quarter. I think you could give him that's 19, a 20, 19, 19 and a half, 20, yeah. Yeah, he's this he's quarter right shy of the 20 girth. So the 39 is, by 20, let's just call him. I say it. Yep. Wow. 39 by 20. What a bruiser. <laughs>